Welcome, I'm Michael Sternberg and for this presentation I'm going to outline our Protein Structure Prediction Server FIRE2 and our resources to provide structure-based analysis of missense variants. So starting with FIRE2, its aim is to predict protein structure from sequence and the approach is recognizing a template of known structure from a homologous sequence. The paper describing it is in Nature Protocols and this has received thousands of citations. So the principle is that homologous proteins have similar 3D structures. So here we see the main chain trace of two identical of two proteins with 25% identity. You can see the similar structure. And so if you wish to predict one structure and you recognize that the two sequences are homologous, you can start with one structure, adjust where their insertions and deletions, and hence you'll be predicting the magenta structure from the blue structure. Then you model the side chains, and as a result, you have the predicted 3D structure. So this is, of course, a gross simplification of the procedure, but the basic principles are indicated in this cartoon approach. So how does FIRE work? Well, you simply paste in your sequence into a window, you give your email address, and then you can click Go. We've had over 4 million submissions to FIRE2 and its predecessor, and the papers describing this and the predecessors have over 11,000 citations. What's important is that you get your results back in about two hours. So this is how it works in detail. This is the standard normal mode. You put in your query sequence and then we use Cyblast to obtain a multiple sequence alignment. From this, we predict the secondary structure using Cypred and this generates a hidden Markov model. Previously, we have generated hidden Markov models with the sequence and secondary structure of known proteins, or in fact, a representative set of known proteins. And then you search your query sequence against the database of known sequences and obtain an alignment from this alignment, you obtain the crude backbone where you have equivalences. There are gaps and insertions, and these are modeled using a spare part approach. So you search the protein data bank for similar structures, which would match one end and the other end. You then add the side chains, and then you get a final model. So the main results page is user friendly, and I think this is why we have so many users. You get a simple guideline of the icon, you can click on an alignment, you find out the details of the template, you get the percent identity to the template with an indication, and also you get a confidence level. This is the HH search confidence, and it's important to emphasize this does not indicate the accuracy of the model. This is the confidence that the chosen template is a true homologue, and so the overall fold is a valid model. The precise details will, of course, vary, and I will sh later on show results of a benchmark of accuracy in terms of root mean square deviation against percent identity. So one major advantage of FIRE is that it has many advanced features. So we have something called FIRE Alarm, which automatically runs tricky sequences every week. We have backfire. You can compare a structure to up to 30 genomes and see if it matches. We have one-to-one -one threading where you can use a specific protein data bank for building your model. You identify the template and it will build the model. It will generate the HMM. 
This is important, for example, if you know the target or you wish to model either an APO or a hollow structure. And once you've found, for example, a hit, you can explore alternatives. Importantly, and increasingly used as people are sequencing genomes, is the batch jobs where you can load up hundreds of sequences and run them as it becomes available, as our resources become available. And then there's a job manager which keeps track of your jobs and your history. For these features, you have to look, set up an account. So fire alarm is designed that you've run fire, no homolog is found, that's the end. But proteins are continually being updated in the protein data bank. And next week, there could be a superb template on which we can build a model. But we realize that people are not going to come in every Monday morning before they have a cup of coffee, say, which sequence do I need to rerun through fire? So we do this automatically for you. So we update weekly newly solved PDB structures and then go through the standard fire procedure. If we find a confident hit, we will automatically email you back a model. And if not, we will try again next week. So basically on the fire portal, you can set up to undertake these fire alarm searches for you automatically. And then this is the batch processing where you would put in parts of a genome and then you would run the jobs. It will tell you it's finished. You can click on it and then this will take you straight back to the fire page where you can examine it in detail. But this enables you to find the matches again, color coded by confidence and enables you to do large numbers of processing rather than every time having to submit via the web page. Of course, most of you, if not all of you, will have heard about the breakthrough using deep learning from the company DeepMind in protein structure prediction as shown at CASP. And recently, the David Baker group has identified that they too have a machine learning deep neural network approach to yield accurate models. So the question is, how does this impact on fire? Well, for close homologues, the quality of models by DeepMind or the Baker, or in fact, most service Swiss model, other ones such as from Zhang's group and Baker's group are all comparable. There's minor differences, but in terms of getting a model which you can use for your further work, there's very little difference. Sometimes one's going to be better, other times another. But clearly when the model is at the level of a remote homologue, or if you haven't got a homologue, then these deep mind procedures, these AI based strategies are going to be important. And so our plan over the next year or so is to integrate such a programs which are accessible to us and we can implement in-house. And so when fire doesn't return a confident hit, it will automatically lead to running the procedure, checking you have the depth of sequence alignment, <coughs> excuse me, and also that the protein is not too long as these tend to be more successful on smaller proteins. So now I'd like to turn to the second part of the talk, the structural effects of a missense variant. And this is our portal missense 3D. So it's well known that if you look at a protein structure, you can interpret often the impact of a missense variant due to the disruption of 3D structure. So for example, here we see that the wild type histidine when replaced by a tyrosine results in the loss of a salt bridge. And this leads to mental and physical problems as a result of this variant in carbonic and hydrase two. So the structural coverage of the PDB, about 17%, 18% of the residues in the human proteome can be assigned to a protein data bank structure. However, with modeling, you can get something like an additional 37%. So what we 
set out to do was develop a structure-based approach that works well either with the PDB with accu typically accurate coordinates or with fire models. And we accepted that fire models being predictions are likely to be less accurate. So we needed to develop a procedure that had soft parameters rather than detailed energy calculations and so would be applicable to both protein data bank structures and to fire models. And so this is MISSENSE 3D. In outline, we start with the coordinates, we generate a mutant structure, and then we're going to evaluate the differences in stereochemistry between the wild type and the mutant. So the procedure is here. We identify the variant side chain. We identify the residues that surround it. We strip them away. We replace the side chain and repack it using the squirrel procedure from Dundrak's group. And then we look and compare the wild type with the variant structure and we look for standard stereochemical features. Have we broken a disulfide bridge? Have we introduced a buried proline? Are we introducing a clash? And if any one of these problems arises, we say there is a structural alert and the variant is likely to disrupt the structure. In keeping with the idea that we wish this to be effective for predicted structures as well as crystal structures, we allow the distance calculations of disulfide bridges, hydrogen bonds and salt bridges increased by about by one angstrom from the standard values that we would use. And these features tend to be fairly soft, uh, easy to calculate and not critically dependent on precise structures. So clearly we need to evaluate the procedure. At the time we used uh, variants from Humsavar, the variants in Uniprot, Klinvar and Exac, and we had uh, over 26,000 disease and a large number of neutral. And then we took quality structures and then we mapped them onto the protein data bank structures and we evaluated NISSENSE 3D. We then took these PDB st structures, pretended we didn't know them, and ran them through fire and identified models. And then we were able to see how accurate is MISSENSE 3D on the protein data bank and how accurate are they on fire predicted structures. So this is the accuracy of our fire predicted structures. This is the standard plot as the percent identity decreases, the quality of the model decreases, and this is quite useful showing that for these high models within better than say 70%, you're typically dealing with one angstrom root mean square errors of the main chain. So this is the critical result over here that we're comparing the true positive rate and the false positive rates for different percent identities. And you can see the fire predictions are the leftmost and then the true answers on the PDB are next to it. And you can see only a minor diminution, even at these low identity ranges, between using a fire structure and the protein data bank structure. And so overall, you're getting effective predictions of whether a variant is likely to be disruptive. And so, for example, here we see the impact on a model built on 36% identity. This is the wild type, and this is the variant which we looked at before. Here is the predicted structure, and based, and you can see the salt bridges correctly identified and the deleterious variant correctly identified. And we've developed a server, MISSENSE 3D, where you can either put in a Uniprot sequence or your own coordinates, so you don't have to use a fire model. You can put in any predicted structure. It will give you representations of the wild type and the variant, 
and provides a report. And so, for example, here, we're highlighting that the wild type has the result of breaking a disulfide bridge. We've also developed MISSENSE3DDB, which is a database of pre-computed results on using MISSENSE3D on proteins where we have a structure or a fire predicted structure, and we've mapped it to about 14 million human MISSENSE variants. And we've taken now Nomad, Clinvol, and Uniprof, and we've run through collecting the models, and we've mapped 43,000 variants to from the PDB and 84. Uh, sorry, 43,000 structures and 84,000 predicted models. And then there's a web page you search by G name or Uniprot, and then you can see all the annotated variants. You get a list for a particular protein. You can turn on and off other predictions and other information. You get the result, whether it's a structural clash. You can click to download an information report. And so this is particularly useful if you want to report the impact of a variant, particularly within a clinical context, you get an easy to follow explanation of why we consider this variant damaging. And again, via links, you can return and obtain images of the wild type and the variant based on the 3D missense page. And just very briefly, just flagging up, we've also got an easy to use graphics program called EasyMol. It's designed for the occasional user. It works on the web, no installation, and you can very easily create diagrams suitable for publication. And indeed, several of ours, these public of these images have been published. And so I thank you for your attention.